Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. We're back today with the third and final part of the consecrated snowfields in the things you may have missed in Elden Ring. And we are going to start out straight away by heading into Ordina and grabbing the Sight of Grace. Pretty much the entirety of this video will be centred around this town, talking you through it and trying to help you out because it truly is a painful area. And despite the fact I knew what I was doing, I still died many many times so before we even start to attempt this town i'm going to advise that you teleport yourself back here to the hermit merchant's shack in the lanedale capital outskirts and buy the sentry's torch you don't need the stats to use this for it to be effective and you don't even need to be holding it you can two-hand your weapon and its passive ability will still work even if your offhand isn't currently being used and essentially what this torch is going to do for you is going to show up all of the assassins in this area because there are a few invisible enemies and even when they're visible they're still brutally difficult so genuinely don't even attempt this area without having the sentry's torch on you first now that we've grabbed that and we're back in ordina firstly come to this altar looking structure and just at the base of it you can grab a golden rune 10 and then round the back of this structure off towards the east of the town once you've broken these crates and barrels you'll find three hefty beast bones and I know it's a very minor item, but I'm going to specifically call out how happy I was to find an item hidden behind some breakable barrels. Because in all of the Dark Souls games, there's been many items hidden in breakable barrels. So throughout the entirety of Elden Ring, I have been smashing every single crate and barrel and any breakable object in the hopes that there is going to be some items hidden in there. There never is. So when I finally came across something breakable and there was actually an item in there, I didn't care what the item was. I was so happy that all of my object breaking finally paid off and was rewarded in the form of three hefty beast bones. <laughs> You can see, I'll ask David to just quickly replay the footage, and you can see I was so adamant there wasn't going to be anything in here that I actually already am prepared to jump off the balcony and back out the structure, and then out the corner of my eye I was like, wait no, there's an item! There's an item! <laughs> I don't care that it was the most pathetic item in the world and we can buy an unlimited supply of them by this point in the game anyway still worth it next if you hop on top of this roof you can get yourself eight cuckoo glint stones as well and there is a few other items throughout the town that we can loot that i'll point out to you as we're going through but the next thing i'm going to do is head all the way to the north and start going up these stairs and you can grab an invigorating cured meat here and now as we head back down the stairs and turn right, we come to the most important bit of the town. And this statue advises us that we need to light the four figures in the Everjail. So let's step through into the Everjail and it will bring us to an exact replica of the town. But it will now be full of incredibly powerful archers and invisible assassins. The first thing I'm going to do is jump off the balcony facing south, right where we use the portal to enter the Everjail. And then if you turn west in this little alcove, you can get a golden rune 13. Now I'm going to take this whole area very cautiously and you'll see why in just a second. As we round this corner there is the first assassin. Now if we weren't currently wielding the sentry torch in our offhand he would be completely invisible. Luckily because of this torch we've been able to spot him before he spots us so we can sneak up and get a backstab off and then spam gravity bolts to stun lock him to death. And we'll be rewarded with a golden glove a golden glove wart? We'll be rewarded with a ghost glove wart 9 and then can also grab some freezing grease off this corpse. Now head west and you'll come to your first ladder just around the corner of this building. Scale both ladders all the way to the top and you can light the first altar. We now just need three more of these and that will be Ordina completed. Much easier said than done. I'm now going to start traversing these rooftops heading towards the next one, but these archers are so agonizingly strong. They shoot three arrows at once and there is practically no cooldown between their attacks. So I'm going to give up trying to go over this roof, jump down, hide and heal up. Now I'm going to climb part way up the crumbling wall here and try and gravity bolt her to death from behind. And then instead I'm going to get shot in the back from behind by another archer about five miles away. So now that we're dead we're going to respawn 
jump back into the ever jail and try that again this time when we enter back into the ever jail i'm gonna come down the main stairs here and we'll be confronted with another assassin take him out and once again you'll be rewarded with a ghost glove or nine and right where he was is the second altar that we need to light. The one that we grabbed the golden rune 10 from right at the start of the video. I'm calling that out for you now because I completely forgot that this was an altar. And it takes me about half an hour after finding and lighting the other three before I finally remembered to come and do this one. And another thing I'll call out for you that will make you very happy is the assassins don't respawn. The archers do unfortunately, but there are three assassins total and once you've taken them out they are dead for good so now i'm going to go southwest and start coming behind this building narrowly avoiding a volley of arrows and just at the end here you can get five crystal darts and then as you round the next corner you'll see a ladder take this one and then head all the way up to the top of the next one as well and you'll be able to light the second altar. Actually, you've probably already lit the other one that I missed, so you've already done three of the four. Now, if you drop down and run along this wall, you can hop over onto the neighboring roof and grab three slumbering eggs. Here, I'm gonna narrowly avoid death and just about manage to take out this archer. And then as I get halfway up this roof, we can snipe the other archer that's now below us off to the southeast. Whilst you're up here, Head even further up the ladder still, and you can now light the fourth and final torch. Now we can hop down and finish off that archer. Now that you've lit all four torches, you have technically completed everything that needed to be done in the town, but I will call out a few more items for you as I get to them, so that you know you're not missing anything important. Back at the entrance to the Ever Jail, walking just past the alcove where we found the Golden Rune 13 before, you'll find three old fangs just around the corner. Now we're going to climb back up the first ladder again off to the west of the village. This time I managed to take out the archer that killed me before so we can safely hop over these rooftops and grab a golden rune 13. Of course the other one very swiftly starts sniping me so let's get to safety again. Now we'll start to climb up the roofs and get killed once again. And it's at this point that I remember you don't need to be in the ever jail to loot the remaining items. Once you've gone in and lit all four of the torches, you don't have to keep returning to finish looting everything. You can loot the town at your leisure, not in the Ever Jail, enemy free, which is definitely what I advise. But I am gonna jump in one more time just to show you where the final assassin is if you wanna get that final ghost glove wart. So now we're back in the jail. At the southeastern corner of the town, you'll find the final remaining assassin. And as I say, once again, when he's dead, you'll get a ghost glove wart nine. It's at this point I finally find and light the only remaining altar, which finally breaks the seal in town. Now we're teleported back out of the Ever Jail and I can show you where the last important item is. You can see there's an epic item up on the corpse on the balcony, directly above where we got the hefty beast bones earlier. I'm sure there's a few ways up there, but the way I do it is by hopping on the roof of this sunken house here. Then you can jump round the building from balcony to balcony, and as you get over to this item, you can loot it and you'll find it's a rune arc. There's now another very important item I haven't shown you yet because in this version of the world seals were blocking access but now you can go through this archway right to the back of the town and underneath the stairs in these arches you can get a nascent butterfly and more importantly the black knife armor set and just as with the black knife assassins the black knife armor itself will make you invisible not as invisible as the assassins but you'll still be much harder to detect and i believe if memory serves that your footsteps will be silent as well now congratulations you're done with ordina and you're done with the consecrated snowfields so now that the seals in town are broken head up them stairs and through the portal and you'll be in mikola's halig tree which believe it or not is even worse than the consecrated snowfields were i will be covering this in full in the coming days and oh my god i am not looking forward to it this area is incredibly tough but we can get through it together i believe in us and with that i hope you have an amazing day and i'll see you in the next one bye bye no we're not done yet. I'm going to revoke that buy and show you something else. I just realized this video is literally just me showing you Ordina. And I've been trying to collate enough things that I missed 
to do a separate video showing you the things that people have called out to me that I've missed. But not to toot my own horn, there hasn't been that many. So what I'm going to do is just bung them onto the end of this video instead. So there's two things I really want to show you that I missed when I was going through these areas. The first one is at the Night Sacred Ground Site of Grace in Nokron. So I'll meet you there now and straight away we're going to turn right and head all the way to the top of these stairs. Then we're going to sneak around these enemies and head to the top of the ladder. At the back of the room we're going to turn right again but before we get to the end where the Stone Sword Gargoyle statue is we're going to jump right out of this window. Once we've jumped across and dealt with the Mimic Tear enemy we can now jump back into this building and loot the Nox Flowing Hammer. That's all that I missed here, so now I'm going to take you to the Celia Hideaway and show you another weapon that I missed and also some Spirit Ashes. There's two things in the Celia Hideaway that I missed, and even though I now know what they are and where they are, it still takes me a while to find them. We're just going to keep heading forwards from the Site of Grace, taking out the Crystal Miners as we go, all the way forwards in this next room as well, taking out the Crystal Miners and the Snails. Then, once they're all dead, we'll carry on progressing even further north, right to the end of the room. There'll be two more Crystal Miners here by a bonfire. However, one of them is super powered compared to the others, so even though I'm now very over level for this area. He's still quite scary, so be super careful as you're taking him out. Now we're going to keep running out of the northwest exit to this room, through the cave, and into the next one. And it's here where I missed a few items. We're going to hug the right wall and jump up on top of this giant crystal. Now we'll drop down and jump off towards the northwest. And in here is an illusionary wall that you can take out. In this chest, you will find the crystal spear. This is the first of two items I missed in the Celia hideaway. So now we're going to drop back down and go back up onto the same crystal again. And when we drop down, this time instead of going northwest, we're going to go southwest and up this exit. And now be very careful as you're dropping down a series of ledges and you'll come into a room with a load of glintstone sorcerers. Once you've dealt with them, you can loot this chest and get the crystallian ashes. They are the few items that I missed up until this point in the series. So just before I finish the video for real this time, thank you everyone so much for pointing them out to me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.